And then, of course, we can go on with uh, our analysis of uh, skeletal asymmetry, and we can see things in the CBCT or in a posterior anterior x ray. We do the same thing, and we see that um, we find more or less the same reference with the teeth, the same angulation, the same inclination. And here we see that we have uh, also an angulation of the antagonial <clears throat> embrasure here, but not as much as it was expecting. Um, but in the CBCT, the really important thing that you have to do is to go and check the TMJ. So this is something that was not allowed to us uh, until the CBCT was, uh, be has become available to all of us. Nowadays, we never have um, a significant asymmetry. I always ask a CBCT, but the only real thing that I am, I can add from the CBCT to my to my clinical observation is the position of the uh, condyle. So let's look at this, and we can see. I'm not sure if I yeah that the two condyles have an asymmetrical position. I see a much larger distance in the two posterior areas. And this is uh, an important information for my future treatment. And uh, this situation can be sometimes um, combined with TMJ problems, but many times it doesn't. So you might uh, ask for a CBCT and uh, some images of the TMJ in cases where you have pain and you have clicks and so on. But a lot of times, patients in this condition have really no problem. Uh, am I going to find every time that I have uh, an asymmetry, this asymmetrical position of the condyles? Not at all, but it happens quite often. So I didn't do a, a research on this. But I believe that, but my impression, uh, I should check my records, is that maybe one case out of two, so about 50%, have an asymmetry of the condyle position. And this case was like that. This is usually a good news. This is usually good news because you can just imagine that by advancing this condyle and bringing it more symmetrical and centered to the fossa, you are doing the opposite path. So you are rotating the mandible in this direction. You are lowering the angle of the mandible. And so you are making uh, um, the, the facial structure not so asymmetrical. Sometimes, or even many times, you can make it totally uh, symmetrical. Not only the condyle, we have to check also the fossa and um, in this case we can see that the eminencia has a very different a very different slope so this is more horizontal this is steeper and we have to say that um, this is a very fav favorable condition because if i am going to advance the condyle and have um, a rather flat eminencia, this is going to help me. This is something that we will discuss more on the second webinar in two weeks about repositioning, but uh, we have to start with some diagnosis first before starting to treat any kind of, um, of asymmetry. As I said, uh, for what concerns the transversal, the development of the, of the maxilla can be uh, different, can be different depending whether you have a tendency to have a narrow or a normal transversal dimension. 
I just made this uh, kind of uh, mm, uh, diagram to try to understand how this could develop. So let's imagine that we have a condition where the uh, maxilla has a very good transversal dimension. So what happens when the mandible starts growing asymmetrically? It doesn't matter whether it is a minus of one condyle or a plus of the opposite condyle. What happens is that <coughs> most of the time, the maxilla is going to adapt to the mandibular um, position, which is now asymmetrical, asymmetrical by expanding this part of the arch and contracting the opposite side. This can be mostly an inclination of the teeth, but not only. There is also the alveolar bone that in, uh, contributes to this compensation. So in this case, is we have also an important asymmet asymmetry of the maxilla or, or the upper arch, because this side is going to be <clears throat> much larger than this side here. Or we can go here. So this is a plus and this is a minus. Now, we have to uh, understand that in this condition, uh, this is also mm, having an influence on the sigil position of the teeth, especially if this is started in, in an early age, which is most of the case, we have asymmetries that ha have developed during the growth of our patients. So what is happening is that on this side, we have less space available for the teeth. And so the mesial drift of the, of the upper teeth is limited. On this side, as a tendency, on the opposite side, on this side here, we have even too much space because the arch is expanding. So what happens is that the drift brings the posterior teeth more forward. So if you combine this um, two things with the fact that the mandible has shift in this direction, it's very easy to understand that in most of these cases, the sigillal relation will be towards a class two on this side and towards a class three on this side. But there is also a contribution, can be a very important contribution of the upper arch dental position. Uh, what we have seen now, it's what you see here in these two pictures are the models uh, after repositioning. So what I have done is that I have rotated the mandible and put it in the symmetric position to the, uh, to the skull. And what do I see here? Uh, I see that the case that we have discussed now is this here that we, uh, we see in the lower. So we call it um, the uh, pattern two actually. And what is happening is that we see this asymmetry of the, man, of the maxilla we see the asymmetry of the mandible, the, the asymmetry of the mandible is almost always there, but the asymmetry of the maxilla is not always there. In this case, well, we didn't have a cross bite on this side. Now here you see that after repositioning, you see almost a scissor bite. In this case, uh, we have an asymmetry of the maxilla, of the mandible, sorry. And an asymmetry of the maxilla. This is the 
this situation when the patients do not develop a crossbite are those where the dental asymmetric compensation is the highest. Uh, if you have a narrow maxilla, this is the pato one here, you might see that the, the situation of the upper arch is much more symmetrical. Why does this happen? Because if a crossbite is developed, this is much more than what you see here because the mandible is, has already been brought to the, to the mid of the face. Uh, the teeth are articulating like this and there is no need for the maxilla to have a transversal compensation. So for this reason, Usually when I see patients that develop a crossbite, uh, they have no or little asymmetry, transversal asymmetry of the upper arch, okay? So this does not mean that there's no asymmetry because the vertical asymmetry is usually there, but at least the transversal asymmetry is not there. So we have two patterns. The one where we have no crossbite, where we have a plus of the maxilla on the deviation side and the minus on the opposite side. The mandible is always like that in both patterns. So we have a minus on the deviation side and a plus on the opposite side. So this is uh, the compensation of the teeth and the alveolar bone to find an articulation. Uh, for what regards the sigillal relation, in both cases, we have the tendency of having more class two than class three uh, in the deviation side. But when you go to a uh, the, the pattern to this uh, condition is not so much. So this is a pattern one. And what you see here are uh, the, uh, the models. But here, what I show to you it's uh, a repositioning of the, of the mandible that I do usually with the virtual articulator. We will discuss this more in the next um, webinar. But just to tell you, okay, here we have a symmetric position of the mandible, what is happening? And we have this tendency for scissor bite here that will be, uh, that is very often treated with a contraction on this side, but always with an expansion here. And we have a tendency of a crossbite here that will be always, always treated with an expansion here. Uh, you will follow the same kind of treatment if you are preparing this patient for surgery or if you are preparing this patient for repositioning. But it's very important to see this because you understand what is the compens dental compensation we have. 